Hey Orkinistas, welcome to the channel Forever Orchids. My name is Tracy and today let's talk about those nasty mealybugs. Yep, I brought a plant in that was infested. So I have got a couple of plants now that also have mealybugs. So I thought we would talk about them today. And this is my Phalaenopsis that currently has some on there. And these are nasty little things. They're white, they're fuzzy. Uh, this is, and I will, I'm definitely gonna show you pictures. This is the long-tailed mealybug, which is very common in Canada and the United States. And that's definitely what's on the plant here. And we're gonna to have to remove the mealybugs off of the plant, and I'm also gonna repot the plant because mealybugs love to go down into the media, deep into the media. They'll get on the roots, they will get in the crevices of the crown of this phalaenopsis, down in where the leaves are coming out. There's a mealybug right here, they're on the new root tips. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 70% isopropanol alcohol. You do not want to use any other alcohol, no methanol, no ethanol. Those will actually seep into your plant tissue and can do a lot of damage. But the 70% isopropanol alcohol is perfectly fine. And I'm just going to take a cotton swab. You can use cotton balls. You could use a little cotton Q-tip or something like that. And we're going to remove those mealybugs. Now, this is a little Phalaenopsis here. This is uh, Phalaenopsis Kenneth Schubert. This is one of my blue orchids. And we'll pop up a picture of what this looks like. And I'm going to see if we can't get some video here of me removing these mealybugs. So let's go to a different camera view and let's talk about the mealybugs as you watch me remove them. And then we're going to unpot and repot in some fresh sphagnum moss and in a plastic pot. The damage that can be done to plants by mealybugs is considerable, causing loss of vigor and weakening and loss of leaves, buds, and flowers with the mealybugs feeding on the soft tissue. Also, mealybugs secrete amounts of what's called honeydew, which makes the plant parts really sticky, which can attract ants and other pests, and you might even get mold. So you definitely want to get rid of these little boogers just as fast as you can. And like I said earlier, Mealybugs can crawl from one plant to another, pot to pot, across benches. They can leave plants, hide under rims of pots and trays, in bench crevices, and even drop from overhead plants. As I finish up cleaning around these root tips, look at this old flower spike here. Look at all the tiny, tiny little mealybugs. Those are called nymphs. And look at those. I've got to get down into those crevices. Sometimes you can take your alcohol and put it in a spray bottle and mist the areas so that you can get down into all of those crevices that you can't get with the Q-tip. Here I'm getting down into the crown. I did notice that there was a mealybug down in there, so I've gotten it out now. Now that we've got all of the mealybugs that I can see visually off of the roots, and out of the crevices. Then let's unpot the orchid here. And at the moment, I don't see any on the root system, but we're gonna start taking this old sphagnum moss out. Get some of these roots here. Just broke that off. Didn't mean to do that. This is a really, really tight plug of sphagnum moss. 
it is very compacted it's 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 a wonder the plant is even getting any air I certainly don't think it is cuz this is so tight so compacted but the reason why we need to repot is because those mealy bugs are going to be down in this media down on these roots they're going to lay eggs the females are going to lay eggs i think i've read somewhere that they can lay up to like 600 eggs and they're going to hatch in about 10 days. That's their cycle of um, how long it takes the eggs to hatch is 10 days. Indoors, you could have close to eight different cycles going on at the same time of mealybugs between the nymphs. Once the eggs hatch, the nymphs and then the crawlers. The crawlers are the ones you have to worry the most about. That's how they're transmitting to other plants. Um, several ways that they can do that. They can do that by flying. The males will fly or get caught on a breeze that might be happening indoors, outdoors especially. But outdoors, you've got some natural pests that can control the mealybugs. Indoors, it's a different story. Now, there are a lot of root tips on this plant i think that's a good sign however this was so tightly wound up in here i look at all these roots that are are coming off and breaking off so this is not good not good at all because it had a really nice root system but i want to get all of this sphagnum moss out oh just breaks my heart to see all these roots popping like this. So tight, but you've got to get this repotted. You've got to get this media out of here to get rid of any eggs. Now, I do have some sphagnum moss that is soaking right now in sea kelp extract. And that's what I intend to pun upon re, uh, repotting this in is in some sphagnum moss, just like it was planted in, but with any luck, no mealybugs. And hopefully the ones that I removed are going to be the only ones on the plant. And I will, it's not up. You really need to use an insecticide, but the only thing that I've got is some neem oil. So I'm going to spray that on the plant afterwards. And I'll just have to, to make that really work. I've got to use that on a regular basis, maybe every 10 days, spray it again. Or every nine days, something like, you know, every 10 days will be probably fine. And just keep an eye on this one. Now you do want to isolate your plants that have had mealybugs or any type of pest on them because you don't want it to go to the other plants in your collection. Now, this is about all that I can get out so far with my hands. And what I'm going to do now is go wash the plant and see if I can get some more sphagnum moss out. Plant is just really not in the best shape. The leaves are tearing quite a bit down in here. So really not in the best of shape and I really want to save the plant it's a cute little phalaenopsis with the blue cerulea flowers and actually the flowers on this particular plant are are sequential look at that just this is terrible and it's it's I'm it's like they've got little breaks in them I guess from being so tightly wound in the sphagnum moss so I'm going to clean this up now. I'm going to wash the plant off and I will be right back and we will pot it up. I've cleaned off the plant with just some water to get into the crevices around the roots here and get any last sphagnum moss out. Now I'm going to take some sterilized scissors here and just cut off some of these roots here that do, do not have the vellum on there. The vellum was actually rotted and I just pulled off. The rotted part here now in this interesting how this root right here the vellum is all rotted 
right here, but then this part is green. So the root itself inside was perfectly fine. It was just the vellum that was bad. Okay, this looks this looks better. Oops, a little bit right here. I'm going to cut off. Okay, now the other reason why I've got sphagnum moss soaking in sea kelp is the sea kelp will help kick the hormones in gear on this plant, get these roots, maybe even more root tips growing, help replace those that we lost here by taking the sphagnum moss off. And I'm going to make sure this fits down in here. It's going to have plenty of room. Pot's a little too big for it. It will be fine. I don't have anything smaller other than some very small clay pots. And I really like to put my Phalaenopsis in plastic in sphagnum moss. I'm not going to compact that sphagnum moss the way it was in, in that plug. I'm just going to loosely have it there at the bottom. Hold the plant in the center here. And then I'm going to keep adding sphagnum moss around it. Wringing out any of the water. No sense in this being drenched in, in water inside the pot. It's already been watered with the wash that I gave it. So I'm just going to loosely put it in here. Needs to still be firm enough that the plant will stand up by itself within the pot. Okay. Clean up here. And then we're just going to keep an eye on the plant. Make sure we don't have any more mealybugs in the next few days. Put my tag back in here of Phalaenopsis Kenneth Schubert. And isolate it. Keep it away from other plants. And I'm just looking to make sure those little root tips that we had to take some mealybugs off of, that they are above the sphagnum moss. So I can keep an eye on them, let them start growing down. And that is it for our mealybug discussion. So until next time, guys, happy orchid growing. Bye.